After taking a look at the old Screw Attack Top 10 Fighting Games, I thought, man, it sure would be fun to go back and re-rank that list. But here's the problem. I actually don't play fighting games much anymore, and I certainly don't play the new stuff. So I could, don't know what to talk about. So I thought, hey, how about I talk about something I do know, which is me and the fighting games that I played growing up that shaped me into who I am. But unlike my old list, I will not be limiting to just one game per franchise, because at the end of the day, good games are just good games. So I'm going to include them. That was always kind of a dumb rule. Anyways, so with that said, uh, this is my first list in a long time. So if you wouldn't mind, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. And subscribe if you're just now finding me or rediscovering me after all these years. Uh, if you want me to do more of these, I think this would be really fun to do. Once again, go back and watch that reaction video as well after this is done. Uh, so with all that said, hey, I'm Stuttering Craig. And this is my top 10 list of fighting games that shape me into this grown-ass man you see today. Now, I don't have the best history with Tekken. I mean, I wouldn't call it my favorite franchise. Or, hell, I don't even know the vast majority of the characters in the game. But I do know Eddie Gordo and Jin and Hitachi, because they were in Tekken 3. Now, Tekken 3 really stuck out for me because it's a chaining combo system, and really just how freaking unbelievably cheap Eddie was. Look, this is... Dude, I, I, I don't even know what is happening right here. I have no idea how to combo this or stop it. It's just insane. Like, cap of wet on my ass. Whatever. But what I really remember about Tekken 3 was a virtual reality version of it in this arcade I worked at called Gameworks that was supposed to mimic your movements so you were doing the moves. And man, it was broken and it didn't work at all. But I liked it and this list is about me. So whatever. Alpha 3 is a game I played most on the Dreamcast, but somehow my controller game transferred over to the arcade stick. I don't know how that works, but it did. You just, I remember going to MAGFest and beating like 18 people in a row. Felt really good. And I played as Blanca for some reason. I don't even know why I played as Blanca. But I really enjoyed the backstories and the little animations for each character. And unlike previous Street Fighters where you learned about the characters based on their outfits or stage, and if you were good enough, their ending, this is one of the fighting games where I actually recall having stories about the characters that I actually cared about. That, and it's just really, really fun. I remember being tremendously skeptical of Mortal Kombat 9 before it came out. But damn, I was slapped in the face by its greatness when I played it. The thing I love most, like you probably, the story mode. It was the best Mortal Kombat movie I've ever played. I felt it really covered all the bases for an OG fan like myself, with little nods here and there filling you in on why MK1, MK2, and MK3 actually happened. I also just really liked how the game felt. I was pretty good for a while, like not competition good or anything, but my Kung Lao was pretty legit. Could it beat you? The N64 was a golden time for party and competitive games, and it was also a golden time for... WRESTLING! Yeah! There was just something about 90s wrestling games that was just... fun. They were not the most technical games. And you know what? That's awesome! Now obviously by today's standards they don't look good, but I will always, 100% of the time, take a game that plays well and I can laugh while playing, over a game that looks good and plays like junk. Now believe me when I say, not all 90s wrestling games were great. I mean, far from it. But, when they hit, man, as someone who was all in on WCW and WWF back in the day, they hit in a special kind of way. I legitimately remember seeing Killer Instinct for the first time. I was standing in Vista Ridge Mall in a tilt arcade next to the food court, and I turned the corner to hear the intro. Available for your home in 1995, only for the Nintendo Ultra 64. What? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? This game is talking to me. This is crazy. After being blown away by the game's attract sound, I saw the gameplay and my feeble little brain couldn't understand how they made graphics so good. Couple that with the announcer just yelling, ULTRA! It might as well have been him just saying, PLAY ME! It was like that gif of Vince McMahon getting the lap dance from Stacey Keeler. <laughs> that fell right on my ass. It was crazy. There was a time not too long ago where I would have said that Smash Brothers wasn't a fighting game. I still have a hard time wrapping my head around how good people have gotten at this stupid little party game, but, you know, it is what it is. People get good at everything. 
I know most people love Smash Ultimate, and it truly is the best Smash game ever made, but I do love me some breaking of the targets. The original Smash was the Smash I spent the most time with, and while I never considered it a fighting game when I played it, that doesn't mean that I'm not cool and I'm not hip. I mean, I know what the kids are up to these days, fellow kids. How do you do, fellow kids? What? God, Steve Buscemi, he played that awesome, didn't he? Now you may be surprised that Third Strike is not number one. And yeah, sure, Third Strike is great and I have a ton of memories playing it, but didn't exactly shape me into the person I am. Although we did have some great throwdowns at Screw Attack back in the day. Looking at you, Chad James, my mortal Street Fighter Third Strike rival. If I recall, the teching system was kind of controversial when Street Fighter 3 was released, but for me, it just made sense. And this is coming from somebody who loved chipping down somebody with fireballs in Street Fighter 2. Oh yeah, I want to take you for a ride. Okay, what is your team in Marvel vs. Capcom 2? Let me know in the comments below, because everybody's is different. God, I love this game so much. It's so stupid and ridiculous. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but when it was first released in the arcades, the arcade goer had to unlock the characters in the game. How did you do that? By pumping them quarters in, baby. Was it sleazy and a total precursor to DLC and in-game purchases? Absolutely. Now I know there's people who can do ridiculous combos and essentially break the game, but I don't care. Give me Cable, Tron, Bond, and Amingo, and I'm having a good time. The first Mortal Kombat was kind of gimmicky to me. I mean, sure it had blood and fatalities and stuff, but it also had a block button. And who the hell wants to play a fighting game with a block button? I mean, why do you even need that? I just press back. It wasn't until Mortal Kombat 2 that I really got it. Everything about Mortal Kombat 1 was just elevated exponentially, including the blood and fatalities. But for me, it was the mood of the game. It's dark, grimy ambiance is just beautiful. But the best thing about it is that it doesn't take itself too seriously with babalities and friendships. I gotta be honest, I, I don't know if I've actually performed either one of those things, but for me, it was the fact that they were in the game which made it great. And don't even get me started about the rumors in the arcade about Mortal Kombat 2. I remember hearing things about a tree fatality in the forest stage and ways to play as Jade and Noob. And the mystery just fueled the game and my imagination. I mean, absolutely brilliant stuff. My love for Street Fighter started with Champion Edition, but Super Turbo has overtaken my heart over the years. I mean, I love the fact that I played as Ryu, and by the way, I always said Ryu, but over the years I've adjusted, it's now Ryu, whatever. Ryu, Ryu, it doesn't matter. I played with him for countless of years, and then eventually I switched over to Chun-Li. It was awesome. I was like, holy crap, she's amazing. And now, she's pretty much the only character I like to play. I mean, I can't even tell you how many hours I've spent playing Super Turbo, how many games I've won, how many games I've lost. I mean, the fact that there is still a ridiculous community built around this game 30 years after its release is insane to me. I mean, I love this. I love that you can learn about somebody the second you play them. If they're aggressive, if they're passive, they're gonna shit talk to you. You know, you learn all these things. And that's what I love about arcade games and fighting games in particular. Look, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys are new, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. It's my first time going out. It's the maiden voyage back in the top 10 boat. So let's see if you guys want to see more. Appreciate you guys popping in. Once again, new videos all the time in shorts here on my channel with some live streams. So I'd love to see you there. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good day.